Boxing is a sport that thrives off fantasy matchups. We always wonder if today's boxers could beat the boxers of the past, and vice versa. Some arguments have been made on both sides, and some individuals have very strong opinions regarding such. This had us thinking about the late 1800s, 1885, specifically John L. Sullivan, the Boston Strong Boy, who was the world heavyweight champion at the time, and the first in the sports history under the Marcus of Queensbury rules. John L. Sullivan went undefeated for his career outside of losing his final fight in 1892 against James J. Corbett. Sullivan was not in his best form then, but that was more to his own doing. Sullivan is often categorized as a brawler with limited skills, but there are some indications that he had a bit more science to his game than some may think. Sullivan is associated with the bare knuckle boxing era, but most of his matches were actually under the Marcus of Queensbury rule. During this era, there were no fighter ratings, but the boxing librarian has done the yeoman's work to allow us to get a glimpse of where Sullivan would have been rated pound for pound in the late 1890s. Sullivan was rated number 7 pound for pound in 1891 and 1892 before his loss to Jim Corbett. Of course, this would also be his final fight, so that essentially was where everything stood with John L. as far as ratings are concerned. Ratings eventually became a staple of boxing at the Ring's publication in 1922, and we've had them ever since. How would John L. Sullivan fare against the Ring's top eight heavyweights at the beginning of 2023? Here's how the current Ring ratings stack up. You have Oleksandr Usyk, the current Ring, IBF, WBA, and WBO World Heavyweight Champion. At number one is Tyson the Gypsy King Fury, the current Lineal and WBC World Heavyweight Champion, the man that beat the man. Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber, is ranked number two, and he's the former WBC World Heavyweight Champion, having lost his titles to Tyson Fury. Anthony AJ Joshua is number three, the former IBF, WBA, and WBO World Heavyweight Champion, who lost his titles to Oleksandr. Alexander Usyk. At number four is Joe Juggernaut Joyce, who's yet to get a title shot but seems to be on a trajectory for such at some point soon. We then have the destroyer Andy Ruiz at number five, and he's the former IBF, WBA, and WBO World Heavyweight Champion, which he picked up by defeating Anthony Joshua. Dillian the Body Snatcher White ranks number six and was recently knocked out by Tyson Fury in his bid for the lineal WBC World Heavyweight title. Number seven is Luis King Kong Ortiz, who twice lost to Deontay Wilder in bids for the WBC World Heavyweight title. At number eight comes Joseph Parker, a former WBO World Heavyweight Champion who lost his titles to Anthony Joshua. Here are the measurables, and as far as weight is concerned, we're going to go with the last recorded weight in the last fight for each of these fighters. John L. Sullivan, he stood 5'10 and a half and weighed 212 pounds in his final fight with a reach of 74 inches. Oleksandr Usyk stands 6'3 and weighed 221 and a half pounds in his last fight. He has a 73 inch reach. Tyson Fury is 6'9 and weighs 268 and 3 fourths pounds and has an 85 inch reach. Deontay Wilder is 6'7 and weighs 214 and a half pounds with an 83 inch reach. Anthony Joshua is 6'6, weighs 244 and a half pounds with an 82 inch reach. Joe Joyce is 6'6, weighs 271 and 3 fourths pounds with an 80 inch reach. Andrew Ruiz is 6'2, weighs 268 and 3 fourths pounds with a 74 inch reach. Dillian White is 6'4, weighs 251 pounds with a 78 inch reach. Luis Ortiz is 6'4, weighs 245 pounds with a 78 inch reach. Joseph Parker is 6'4, weighs 255 and 1 fourth pounds with a 76 inch reach. Now, Sullivan faced a fighter by the name of Jack Burns in 1881 who stood 6'6 six, six and weighed 215 pounds, knocking him out in the first round. This was the best combination of size and weight we could find on Sullivan's resume that was comparable to the heavyweights on this list. Now, how would he fare? Joseph Parker is a solid heavyweight with all-around ability. At 255 plus pounds, he actually moves pretty well in the ring. Parker has been more of a passive puncher over the course of his career as he usually waits to be engaged before he actually engages. Still, his work under the former middleweight world champion Andy Lee has brought about more offense in his recent fights. Parker has been in with several of the best heavyweights in the world, which was only sometimes the case, maybe even less with Sullivan. Sullivan racked up a ton of knockouts, but there are certainly questions regarding the level of competition. Now, we do know that at his peak, Sullivan was viewed as the most dominant offensive heavyweight in the world. 
The question would be how Sullivan deals with such against a world-class opponent like Parker, who's bigger and seemingly stronger. Now, Parker has been stopped and at times hasn't been able to find that mean streak that we're accustomed to seeing with some of the fiercest fighters of the past. That said, it's not in his overall mentality and hasn't really slowed him down much over the course of his career. Sullivan was fierce without a doubt, but had trouble staying focused in the later stages of his career, which could be a problem. Parker probably wouldn't wow with one single punch, but has the makeup to pull off a clear decision despite the lacks of frills and spills. At the same time, he could also coast and leave unexpected and unneeded openings. Luis Ortiz is pretty sound in the skills department being a student of the Cuban School of Boxing, which has been successful in almost every era, though mainly at the lower weights. Ortiz is like a clock that keeps ticking. Despite setbacks, he's always back in the ring at the right time. Timing would be the case if he and Sullivan were to face off. At his best, Sullivan would be on an offensive onslaught and force Ortiz to fight fire with fire. Ortiz, though, is no slouch in the power department and packs enough of a punch to end Sullivan's night if he catches him slipping. If Sullivan got the fight to the later rounds, he would increase his chances of catching Ortiz, and the right shots could send Ortiz down at the highest level. Ortiz has decent head and foot movement, but it certainly isn't at a blazing pace and is more subtle. Sullivan wouldn't be doing himself any favors by simply trying to outbox Ortiz, so the onus would be on Sullivan to hit him with something that hurts him early to set the tone of the fight. Ortiz, though, is a pretty solid guy, so it would be another load for Sullivan to try and deal with. At the end of the day, the overall pace dictates the fight and who comes out on the top. While this isn't very relevant, Dillian White is probably the most disliked fighter on this list. Now, most of this is his own doing as far as his sometimes smug attitude and not showing up for promos. When White is on his game, despite his deficiencies fundamentally, he has shown to be a tough outing. Many consider White nothing more than a brawler, similar to what's generally thought of John L. Sullivan. This would likely make for an entertaining, if not ugly, fight. Come to think about it, it would likely be an ugly fight more so than entertaining, as there may be a bunch of holding and rabbit punches. Certainly, the referee would be in for a hard night's work. White is the bigger and possibly stronger of the two at 6'4 and upwards of 250 pounds, so that would play in his favor when the two men are tied up inside. That said, Sullivan knew all of the bare knuckle dirty tricks to make it pretty uncomfortable for White. White has sometimes been lazy with his fundamentals, resulting in him finding out the hard way why one should stay focused. Maybe the body snatcher could slow Sullivan down to the body. Maybe Sullivan finds an opening and goes for broke. Either way, both men would be easy to find. Though you might not think so at first glance, Andy Ruiz has some of the faster hands related to the boxers on this list. As a matter of fact, they may very well be the fastest. Ruiz was pretty much a French contender in the heavyweight ranks despite a good record, but took a chance in taking on Anthony Joshua in 2019 on short notice, and it changed his life. One thing that him and Sullivan do have in common is the fact that both saw struggles with their weight and shape over the course of their career, largely on the back end for Sullivan. That said, it still didn't stop either from racking up win after win. Ruiz likely won't wow Sullivan with his movement, but he would do enough to keep Sullivan honest. Ruiz has shown that he has a pretty solid chin as well. Sullivan would probably work well on the inside working the body of Ruiz, but at 260 plus pounds, Ruiz wouldn't be easy to move. The big stage hasn't proven to be much of a burden for Ruiz inside of the ring, but it has crept in as far as the outside, and thus there is always the question of what version of Andrew Ruiz will we see. That said, Sullivan too would likely have to deal with the same questions as he had a far worse track record outside of the ring. There are things to like and dislike about both fighters which makes this a tough call that may cancel each other out in some sense. Joe Joyce versus John L. Sullivan is very intriguing. In the case of Joyce, he may be the actual juggernaut, as his head is a helmet. Joyce has been hit with some of everything, but thus far it hasn't been able to slow him down. Slow is also a term used by many when describing Joyce's punches, but they certainly find a way home regardless. Sullivan isn't one many will lump into the speed department either, making Joyce the perfect opponent for him to slug it out. A number of fighters got off to a good start on Joyce, but he eventually broke them. Sullivan gave up 110 pounds when he knocked out 300 pounds of Vester Leguriff in 20 seconds back in 1884, but little is known about Leguriff in the skills department, and he only fought once. Joyce has knocked out all but one of his opponents, though many haven't been in the flashiest of fashion. The term big strong boxer should have Joe Joyce's picture next to it, because that's what he's proved to be. At 271 pounds, he's the heaviest on this list. Joyce has the fundamental tools and is more athletic than what may initially meet the eye. 
Sullivan's best chance would likely be via decision, though it's hard to see him outboxing Joyce, who is pretty experienced in the skills department overall. That said, maybe Sullivan could outpoint him on activity and clean landing, though he would need his chin to be fully charged to get to that point. If you were to stand Anthony Joshua next to John L. Sullivan, it wouldn't be conceivable for the average person to think that Sullivan could stand a chance. Chiseled like a marble sculpture, everything would be in Anthony Joshua's favor based on looks alone, but boxing is more mental than the physical, which would be Sullivan's strong point. Joshua has shown that he can box and move reasonably in some of his matches, though not at the degree of the others on this list. Joshua is strong, but doesn't necessarily have the one-punch knockout power Deontay Wilder possesses. Anthony Joshua sent shockwaves around the sport when he was knocked out by Andrew Ruiz, who seemingly didn't pack a punch to be able to knock out a larger Joshua. John L. Sullivan would be all over Joshua on the offensive front, so a chance at the knockout would certainly present itself. Much like everyone on this list, the height and overall size would not be in Sullivan's favor. Joshua has shown that he's better the second time around when facing an opponent, but that doesn't necessarily mean he wins. That said, Joshua would likely play it more careful knowing that Sullivan's best chance would be via knockout. Joshua also has the muscle to be able to deal with the clinches of Sullivan on the inside. When he has turned it on, Joshua has been able to get opponents out in pretty epic fashion, so as long as he doesn't catch anything himself. The most intriguing matchup on this list is Sullivan vs. Wilder, as Wilder has shown that he has the punch to end things at any time unless you're Tyson Fury. Does Sullivan have the beard to withstand the biggest shots of the biggest puncher as far as today's heavyweight? Much like Sullivan, Wilder doesn't get much credit on the skills department, but he has been able to win most of his fights based on his punch alone. This too was the case with Sullivan, who racked up a number of quick knockouts. Sullivan would have to deal with the heightened reach of Wilder, but would likely have the ability to cut the ring off on Wilder and work his craft from the inside. Wilder seemed to be very sure of himself as far as the power of his right hand is concerned, but what if Sullivan took his best shot and got up? Could a noted brawler like Sullivan actually outbox Deontay Wilder? Tyson Fury would prove to be a major challenge for Sullivan as far as the measurables are concerned. Sullivan would give up nearly a foot in height and around 57 pounds. Fury knows how to use his size to his advantage as seen in his contest with some of the other elite heavyweights. Additionally, relative to size, Fury can move very well. His footwork and long jab keeps opponents at bay as he avoids major punishment. That said, Fury has been dropped on a few occasions which bodes well for Sullivan who would likely need to land something huge to get Fury's respect. 6'3", 210 pound Steve Cunningham was able to catch Fury with the big shot that sent him down so Sullivan could potentially do the same. Now, Cunningham wasn't able to last through the entirety of the fight and eventually he was knocked out himself. Fury would likely make it an ugly fight and use his weight, but ugly fights were a norm for Sullivan, who also has that bare knuckle experience. The fight is likely a game of attrition as neither fighter would want to back down. In the end, the fighter with the stronger will shall prevail. Fury has found himself in dark places, so could Sullivan psych him out mentally? The press conferences prior to the matchup would be worth the show on their own. Alexander Usyk is the most polished boxer on the list and his IQ and skill set pose many problems for Sullivan. Sullivan would give up roughly 4.5 inches in height but not too much as far as weight is concerned. Sullivan does have the reach advantage by an inch. With Usyk not being a big puncher compared to some of the others on the list, Sullivan would have a chance of withstanding whatever punishment was dished out. Sullivan was known to have a good chin and could go the distance if needed but it would be hard to get off punches on Usyk given his foot movement and we do know that James J. Corbett along with even smaller heavyweights were able to trouble Sullivan with movement. Since making the jump from cruiserweight to heavyweight, size has always been a question related to Usyk but he's shown that he can withstand and is shifty enough to stay away from the dangerous spots for most rounds. Sullivan's best chance would be to rush Usyk looking for a knockout. Sullivan was able to carry power later into fights, but the movement of Usyk would likely make it very challenging. With roughhouse tactics allowed, Sullivan's chances improve significantly. At the end of the day, fantasy matchups are solely based on opinion. Some hold more weight in certain departments, but are still opinions nonetheless. Truth of the matter is, the conditions from the time of Sullivan are very different than the conditions of today. There are pros and cons in favor of both sides. The only real way to evaluate the fighters would be to have them fight in their respective eras, which would alter the landscape vastly. What we do know is that there are a number of fighters from every era who stood above the competition, many who aren't on this list and many who weren't heavyweights. With that in mind, it's always fun to think about what may have been. Let the arguments ensue.